Arthur Simons. I was born in town of Johnstown, September the 17th, 1925, and nine brothers and five sisters. We lived on a farm. And when I was 12 years old, my father passed away, and we moved to the city of Johnstown. That's where I grew up and went to school until I went to the service in 1943. And from there, I went to boot camp. I went down to Kentucky, learned how to drive the tanks and the half tracks, how to shoot the rifle, all the basic things of the serving in the war. I had three other brothers that were in the service. One was in the same France where I was, and the other one was in Italy, and the other one was in the Philippines. And we served throughout France, liberated France. And from France we went to Holland. Holland went to into Germany. And that's when the war ended. So from then on, I broke my wrist. I was in a hospital for six months in Germany. Then I re-enlisted and the doctor told me that I would be laid up for about six months with my wrist and arm so I might as well go home. So I said I'd think about it. So he came back the next day. He said, well, what do you think? He said, I have you home by Christmas. And this was in about September. And uh, <laughs> I said, okay, you take care of the paperwork because I re-enlisted. He said, you what? I said, I re-enlisted. He said, no. He said, I'll, I'll get the papers. He said, you'll be home by Christmas. Well, from there, Germany, I got shipped to uh, Long Island, Power and General Hospital. And I was there for about three months. But it wasn't December, it was in May 1946. So he was a little off on his timing. So then I came, I got discharged in May of 46 and I came home. And I went to, well, started taking up carpenter work. And I didn't care for that. So I didn't do much. Then I went in silk mill later on. 1950 I got married. Had five children. Two boys and three girls. And I just worked around the skin mills. Then I bought a bar room, stayed there four years, and I didn't like that, so I sold out that. Then I worked at the Pan, Pan Am for seven years, so I was 62, and I retired. But going back to France, I was with the 88th Con Reconnaissance Squadron Mechanized. And I was uh, 8th Armored Division. And I had trained to be a tank driver and a half track driver and a machine gunner. And our first action was in Lintford, France. And that's where I, we first saw the action. I just, then that's where we see the dead bodies laying on the ground. and uh, That's why I put a lot of that stuff out of my mind. Uh, just erase it. And uh, my brother was ahead of me about, oh, maybe 
my commander said the party about 30, 40 miles. Now I don't know what happened, what's happening to him, and he don't know what's happening to me. If I'm alive, dead, I don't know the opposite way. But uh, anyway, I never got to see him until we all got discharged. Let's see. My other two brothers, they're deceased now. And, uh, I don't really know what this morning to say what I said so far. Well, I want to stop. Tell us a little more about when you uh, got into your first action. Um, how, how many days did your first combat action last? Let's see, I, I say when, I, about the, when we first went and when we keep moving, instead of moving, we move so fast that uh, we moved so fast. We had uh, 12, 12 tanks in our platoon, and we were on this road, and I was probably seven tanks behind, and when we heard that. The Germans had a, uh, a setup of 88, some 88 guns, some big ones. They had knocked out three of our tanks. Well, we had this, uh, 75 Hollisters on our tanks. And, and so they, that's probably when we first actually, of course, we're probably a mile from where, them, where they were, but they was calling in for for fire from us. But when we got out there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, another bad scene where he, our soldiers were lying on the tanks dead, one of 88, just demolishing tanks. That's when we first seen the action. Now the 88s, uh, the German 88s, they were quite accurate. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's what they was, everybody was, was deaf afraid of them. And, uh, see, my brother, he was in uh, Infantry 394, and they had the, uh, the 105s. Now, they would shoot probably 18 miles, roughly. And our guns were probably about 8 miles. And uh, when we set up, we would probably shoot 100 rounds into everywhere where they want us to shoot, hit that city. And, uh, of course, you, with that kind of a, back then, uh, I don't know how they do it now, we do it with airplanes, I guess, but you had to have uh, observation post. You might, like I, I went with, with the lieutenant one time, and here we are in a uh, abandoned, uh, well they had took this village, and we're up here in the Dane steeple, church steeple, directing the fire from our guns. Now, the first two or three, four or five rounds, you better be pretty good on the distance, or they might be shooting shorten and blow you up. So that's all kind of stuff like that. Now was your unit attached to infantry also? Were you protected by infantry? Uh, the 8th Armored. Uh, so my brother was in, I think he was in the 9th Armored, armored Infantry. He, he enlisted in 30 39, I think, and he was in the regular horse cavalry. And then he, they went from the mechanized. And the, and the 88th was born. And uh, this was an all new outfit. Started right from scratch. Now, can, can you show us the, the uh, book, the Thundering Herd book? That is, that is your uh, book. Of your unit? Yeah. 
Yeah. Can you hold that up for the camera? All 100, 108 men. Wait a minute. Yeah. You want me to tell them? Just hold that right up for the camera. And that's when your division was started in 1944? No, no. That, that was probably be about the uh, first part of 43. Okay. It took me that long to get it all set up and built, rebuilt up. Now, what do you want me to tell? Um, those those tanks, uh, did, did you happen to be in the Battle of the Bulge? During no. No, I think my, my brother, one brother was in there. <clears throat> So from France, where did you go? Went to Holland. Um, so you went to Holland. What type of action did you see in Holland? Just uh, get ready to uh, cross the Lower River and uh, the, uh, the it's a secure place for them to put a bridge, you know, that pontoon bridges or floating bridges the way I call them. Like that, that's what we did. Were there any types of battles um, prior to you going across the Ruhr River? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah we, we said we had to, uh, I think it was three tanks were sent up to blast them out of there, the Germans out of there. It's almost like right now over in Iraq there, where they, right now in skirmishes, you know, they, they come in from behind or something, you know, they pockets their guys. You know. but the, they got the bridge across. We crossed it, was, I think, in the middle of the night. Okay. How about showing us your uh, uniform that you uh, came home with from oh, yeah. World War II? You want to see the Eisenhower jacket? That's the famous Eisenhower jacket. You're President of the United States. And it was put out in 19, around 1945, the last part of 45, I believe. Now, what, what do those medals stand for? What are those medals? Oh, it's Good Conduct Medal, uh, how many stars, the years you had in, same way the stripes on the, down here. Mm -hmm. That's your, this is a T5 rank. This here is the Armored Division. Uh, well, all that. Uh, now those little those little uh, pins that are on the uh, on your ribbon, what do they stand for? Was well, good conduct metal, and probably the sharpshooter. Are those and battle battle stars? No, maybe that's the, so I served in. Uh, So we're going to, uh, France, Holland, Germany, there'd be three. Mm -hmm. so. How hmm. about your book? Wait a minute. You want now, can you show us your uh, New York State award that was given to you? There it is. That's the New York State Liberty Award. The highest award that the state of New York gives out for serving in the service. This is a picture of Hugh Farley that was responsible for these medals. And we also got a certificate of appreciation from the government of France for the veterans of World War II that liberated France in 1945. That's, that's where I always seen all my action was mostly in France. Now can you show us that picture in the frame there? Can you hold that up to the camera? This one here? Yes. 
Now, what would that be? This is me, Arthur Simons, in this service. I want to point out one thing. You probably won't even notice it about my hat. We're the only outfit in the United States Army that wore our hat on the left hand side. Now, can you explain why? I, I don't remember them telling me why, but they, it was a new outfit, and I guess they wanted to be different. That's, that's about, about what I know. <laughs> but, uh, but that's, that's the way it started out. Now, can you show us this book that says the 88th? And explain what that is. Uh, this is a book of the 88th Connison Squadron Mechanized. It used to be a horse cavalry. So as things advanced, they went, got rid of the horses and they got tanks and half tracks and come up with this 88th Cavalry Connison. Now, is that a picture of you? No, this is me again. And that's that's a, a history of the action that you were in in World War II. This book here tells me everything that the 108 men did during the, the time that we started to the time the war was over. There's nothing in there that is uh, got maps in there telling you all kinds of where we fought and, and what city and everything. That's the what would you say would be what would you say would be your most memorable uh, action when you were when you were over there? I don't think it was the action. Uh, when we left, when we left England, Tidworth, Windmill Hill, England. That's what it was. Windy, windy. We traveled about 160 miles. Now, this is winter, cold, snow, and everything. And that when we when we stopped to bivouac, it was so cold. We had to stay in the vehicles to keep warm. And somewhere that day, uh, the big uh, truck come in with bills of straw. So we dug the holes out of the snow and filled them up with that straw. You know what happened next? We moved out. Never used it. So that's, that's in my mind most of any action that I saw. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you it was cool. And, but and then, then that's when we kept moving farther into the, into the action after that. How about when you went into Germany? How far into Germany did you go? <laughs> Those names I can't pronounce, but it's all in this book. It was, it was, but I can't. I know we was right in the, the first, the first village we went into, or town, could be like Johnstown or like that. And it happened to be, I, I was riding in the in the back of the half track, and and usually I'm up on a machine gun. What just happened? I don't know. Uh, my lieutenant was up there. And as we was coming in, they had snipers somewhere, and one of them <laughs> bullets came in the back of that half track, rick ricochet, you know. And so we just just ducked down, you know. And somebody come on the radio and said that uh, that sniper is up. Uh, in that uh, steeple, and so automatically the kind of he just put that 50 caliber up in that steeple, and that was the end of the sniper. 
but that's just one of those. Then when we moved out of there, we went to a very small, uh, small village. I forgot the name of it. But anyway, uh, we pulled in this little to park, you know, like, and set up a perimeter. <laughs> and uh, we, just as I, I was driving a half track, just as we pulled in there, kapoom. That regal mine hit that and blew that half track wheel right off. And that's that's just another one of those close calls. So you had a few close calls. Yeah, I, you know, uh, I think what really, being that we were uh, did most of our big fighting with the big guns, you know, three miles or four miles up, making sure the, the infantry platoons would be less, you know, susceptible to ambush or something. And maybe that's why I'm alive today. But if I would probably have been in a different platoon, there's 30, there's 35 got killed in this. They were going down the road. Here's a, here's a story too. I'm glad I wasn't in that. They come across a, a pile of, uh, I think they were the Regal Mine or the Tilly Tops or something they call I mean, I wasn't no lieutenant or colonel, but I know I would never took 13 or 14 men down there by those mines and tried to just, I don't care how, if you're an expert or what, go by yourself if you want to do it. Don't take your whole platoon with you. Kill them all. They don't, don't, they don't look around with it and it had I thought it was the winter, snow, now this is spring. And the snow had melted and the sort of, uh, they did something with those mines and they had them booby trapped. And it killed that whole, that whole platoon just by foolishness. That's another one I escaped. A lot of little things like that, you know. That, uh, I mean, I would have never did that. I know that. But, uh, and what the heck else was there? What was your best time at service? Your most enjoyable time? South Polk, Louisiana. It, it was a rough place for training. I'm telling you that was when you were on when you were on your uh, five mile hikes. When you time you got there, I'm telling you, you knew that you had hiked. That was rough. But they had it nice there for the servicemen. Real, real nice. They had a I don't know, 300 feet or yard swimming pool. Made sure it was big enough for all of it. And, and they had a terrific big skating rink, roller skating rink. And that's where I spent my time in the pool and in this roller skating rink. Okay. I didn't go to the PX as much. I didn't smoke, didn't drink. Well, no sense of going there. <laughs> so I went there uh, swimming. Rollers, I like the roller skate. And, but that, that's what I, there, because I think after you, after you, uh, after you left the United States, uh, it wasn't nothing to do, just train and train and clean your guns and clean your guns. And, and it wasn't no pleasure. I mean, it, uh, oh, they had a few, uh, 
came to a place that we've already went ahead to do it. What they what they call it? Not PA, the Red Cross sets them up for didn't they? USO? Yeah, USO. I just go there and just write letters back home. But uh, other than that, uh, I didn't go out around that bad too much. And, uh, I didn't tell you how I broke my wrist, did I? No. This is right after Japan surrendered. We was in Germany. We was uh, in the barracks, and they had a lot of horses. So being I was a farm boy, so me and my friend went to a horseback ride. So I got this horse there. He brought that horse out. That German guy there. So I got on him, turned around, put my hand back like that. I said, you coming, Bass? Next thing you know, I was flying through the air. That's how I broke my, the first time. And the second time, I was, uh, instead of using the gas for messengers, so I had a bicycle they had. So I was delivering a message down to the captain. I don't know if these guys were being smart or not, but they came up behind me, hit my bicycle, knocked me off the bicycle, and broke my same one again. So that, now I was back in the hospital again. <laughs> and I still had that cast on my arm when I uh, come home. Uh, but, uh, That's about all. Uh, well, it was in Germany, you know, they had a lot of deer. If you wanted to eat deer, you, you know, each platoon was allowed one deer a month. And you go out and you just shoot that one deer and you bring it back. And it seemed like uh, the house that we had, it was like, a, like, like a, I don't know, a German maid or something. She did all the cooking for the soldiers and they cooked the deer and all that. So, so we didn't do too much after the war, just mucking around. Just waiting for the, I guess what I call it, the points to get. Yeah, they had so many points. I think mine was 36 before they could ship you back. Were you in the service? Yes. What's your name? 